See, we always start a shot. We always start the day with a shot of chance, looking a little bit lost. Isn't that right, buddy? And as you can see, we never got any painting done yesterday. And Mr. Chancy Pants actually stood in the self-leveling compound and left your paw print, didn't you, boy? Where did you leave that paw print, Chance? Up there? Yes, you did. So, good morning, folks. Welcome along to the vlog. What I would like to see happen today is before the day is out, the floor painted, and also the workshop back together because at the moment it's scattered everywhere and all the tools are on the floor. Anyway, um, before we go into the workshop and, uh, and start doing that job, I want to show uh, my labels that have arrived. This was a real quick turnaround actually. So here is the stout label. Check it out. It's got a really nice texture on it as well. I'm very pleased. They did send me a warning saying that my barcode wasn't big enough. It needs to be 30 millimeters. But for the first 500, whatever, I'm just gonna run with it. We'll sell them. And uh, on the next batch, we'll, we'll up the size a bit. So that's the stout. And then next we have our pock, as it's become affectionately known in the pub or the proof of concept again that's come out really nice and vibrant and uh, I'm really quite pleased with the uh, the effect and everything's in the right place which is nice to see and then last but certainly not least we have our old faithful everybody's favorite le vacant gesture here she is so this is uh, maybe the fourth or fifth version of the vacant gesture label since its conception and I think that this one is the best yet. What do you reckon folks? I really like it. So yeah, all we need to do now is go ahead and put all of these beers into bottle and then put the labels on and get some gift packs as well so we can start to sell them for all the uh, all the Christmas gifts that people are going to give to their dads, granddads, daughters and mums and all that kind of stuff I'm sure. Anyway, let's get uh, let's get into this damn workshop over here because it is getting a little bit of a mess since we stripped it all back the other week. I'm going to ping the light on if you uh, bear with me. There we go. So we've got all the chairs in here which are looking to be repaired. This back wall, well I'm not sure what to do with it yet. I'm thinking about moving things around. So I think I'm going to have to just get my design head on and get it moved, frankly. Because all this space needs to be optimised as best we can and maybe today is the day to do that we shall see anyway we've got a few hours it's half past 11 let's get cracked on with the job any further in terms of tidying but what we have done is we've relocated those shelves over there and the chop saw table has begun to be manufactured so what we've done is taken some 18 mil ply and I've built this cupboard it's yet to receive a couple of doors on the front to keep all the dust out and of course it's going to go on some casters like this lot here so we can wheel it in and out but that's going to allow me to a cut longer material because I can run it straight out the door through the chop saw and then we've got about three or four meters that way in order to get bigger lengths on 
I can also use this fence as a guide, provided I got it in the right place, but it is there and it is doable. And then once this is on wheels as well, I can just pull it out. Still got a bit of a wobble on it. I think might need to put some cross braces on the front, Gem. We'll see, maybe just a couple of gallows brackets on inside. But once we get some shelves in there, that might make a difference. But either way, it's more storage. And then on the top, I've just put this little enclosure in for now. This is normally to catch the dust, but what I want to do is bring that out to the same width as the base and bring it right up to the front edge here. So it's basically 500 mil from front to back. And then maybe I can start hanging some, I don't know, maybe some like conveyor belt rubber or something along the sides. I've seen that on uh, John Hines's channel and he's done that to kind of catch most of the dust from when he's using his chop saw. So that's an idea, something that we can kind of put together as and when we've got a bit more time. But it's basically taken all that shelving out of there and we moved it to this side. We still have more shelving to put up at the top and I'm gonna put shelving in this window reveal so I can store all my kind of uh, drill bits and that kind of stuff and they're all easily accessible for the drill press. This will be a project table, as is this. I wanna keep that one out though because it's got the two clamps on here for woodworking which comes in handy. This is on loan though, this this S. Joburgs, Joburgs, jo however you pronounce it. This Joburgs table belongs to somebody else. I'm merely looking after it. And then ultimately what I'd like to do is fill the whole of this space under the table saw with interchangeable drawers like that. The good thing about these is that when you pull them out, they'll go into any other slot. So these are all one draw depth. They're two draw depths. That one over there is three draw depths and they, uh, they'll they chop and change. I can't remember the chap's name whose channel I pinched that idea from, but it's not mine. So what we're gonna do now is grab the brush and we're finally gonna go out here and get some paint on the floor. I don't know what Gemma's prattling about with here. What are you doing there, love? Yeah, so we're just gonna sweep and hoover and then get some paint, at least on that side. And then, and then let it dry for the next day or two. So get rid of these chairs. then yes so what I did was uh, I went upstairs and I looked where Gemma had been looking and I found six you just can't get the spare you can't different when we're at home though isn't it and I'm looking for something and you always seem to be able to find it I reckon you're just turning tables on me I think you picked them from me. Yeah? I think you did the rollers. I didn't. Still won't tell where you found them. They were on table. I can't like, explain it because there's just junk everywhere up there, isn't there? So it was just like in with the junk. Mm -hmm. Oh god, here. Hold me out. I'm about to add paint as well, but Stuart's taking some beers out of the cold room and if you can hear, it's raining, so up in this corner, it's wet anyway, so we're going to have to just kind of uh, do that another day, essentially. We'll go as far as we can go with it today. Just basically where all the fermenters go. Best use this last little bit then, hadn't I? For under here. And this is just where that end fermenter lives. Then we can get this fixed up and looking sharp, as they say. Then we can come back 
another day when all the tanks are in place and just do the, the walkway, the corridor bit down the centre. Oh dear me. But yeah, it's looking like that's all the paint we've got in the tray today. Yeah, love. So uh, on that note folks, make sure you can see what we've done. Yeah, it always looks great, doesn't it, once it's had a lick of paint. But yeah, on that note, we're going to wrap it up and see you tomorrow. Before I go, don't forget the link below. Get the votes in for the North Knots Business Awards. The link's in the description. The Brew Shed, Harrison's Brewery and Iron Tree Designs. We'll see you tomorrow.